Give us a sense of what you and other pharmacists are looking to achieve by walking off the job. Yeah, so the main concern for pharmacists is not their rates of pay, but the ability to be able to be insured hours for technicians and to have better working conditions across the board and pay for technicians. Our technicians are the backbone of every pharmacy. When you walk into a store, you might see six people behind the counter, if you're lucky, if you're in a well-staffed store. That's not the case all the time. But most of those people behind the counter are technicians, and they're making just as much as fast food employees in most places. So in order to retain that top talent, we really need to have technicians have a better rate of pay. Yeah, I, I think six is pretty generous. Usually I see maybe one person who's overworked. Can you describe, Shane, what a typical day looks like for a pharmacist, a, pharma, a technician at Walgreens versus, say, five years ago? Sure. So five years ago, there was a flu shot season, and then there was a ramping up during that time where we'd be giving vaccinations. But right now, Walgreens and CVS are just in love with that margin associated with vaccinations. And since COVID, it's really ramped up that there's no longer a flu shot season, that we've become vaccination clinics who also happen to fill prescriptions in their spare time. So technicians are there trying to get those prescriptions out the door, but at the same time, processing vaccinations, working with insurance companies to make sure that things are covered. Uh, all of this while answering the phones and doing all these other tasks that help with the margins for Walgreens and CVS, but don't really, they're not focused on the two things that we're supposed to be doing giving vaccinations and safely and accurately checking prescriptions for patients. Uh, is there a sense here, uh, Shane, when we talk about kind of what the pharmaceutical uh, industry is sort of involved into, I mean, the pharmacists, I should say, uh, industry has sort of evolved into with some of those issues that you just talked about, is there any sort of uh, sense here that if uh, this continues to move in the direction that that maybe ends up bolstering the independent pharmacists in a way uh, that they actually kind of reassert the role that, quite frankly, they had in most of our lives a couple of decades ago and beyond. Sure, I would say that that would be absolutely correct. Most people fall in love with the, the model once they walk into an independent pharmacy. You know, pharmacists were at one time the most accessible healthcare professional available. And you knew your pharmacist sometimes better than you knew your doctor. And they will fall in love with the idea of working in an independent, going into an independent pharmacy and having that feel where it's really patient first. Mm -hmm. But independent pharmacies are really struggling because of the insurance reimbursements right now. Pharmacy benefits managers have hamstrung a lot of independent pharmacies, and they're they're a dying profession. And I'm sad to see that. So pharmacy has a lot of problems right now, but reimbursement is definitely involved in that. And if we don't have PBM reform you will not have independent pharmacies a decade from now. It seems like you're kind of pushing up against a stone here. I mean, as I'm sure you know, these are structural changes that go far beyond just Walgreens and CVS and the like here. This also has to do with the regulation and legislation that has sort of allowed these companies to sort of uh, blow up and prosper in the way that they have here. So if this is the new normal, meaning uh, the big PBM model here, uh, how do you, uh, as, a, in, as a pharmacist, and, and, for, and for that matter, your peers, particularly those that are looking to unionize here, is there any any hope that they'll be able to sort of make those gains uh, on uh, getting better working conditions and pay? Well, yeah, this this what's coming up in the next week, Farmageddon is what they're dubbing it, is really the flashpoint was Kansas City, the Kansas City walkouts that occurred last month. Uh, 24 CVS pharmacies within the Target channel in Kansas City uh, got together and they were really upset because Target is, is the lowliest of the low in CVS because they're, they have a smaller amount of prescription volume. So they're last on the list of, of, of priorities for a company like CVS. And they even though those stores are open for 64 hours, they've, been ta they've only been given 20 hours of technician help. So essentially, that's the pharmacist by themselves. That six number that I threw out at the beginning is way, way out of range for those Target pharmacies. They were actually operating with just a pharmacist behind the counter for most of the time that they're open. And even if you're doing 100 or 150 prescriptions, you have to remember you might have 100 vaccination appointments uh, as well. So anyone could be overwhelmed with that amount, of, uh, that amount of work. That's like running a McDonald's by yourself, except for the cheeseburgers can kill you. Gotcha. So let me just understand correctly, Shane, more pay from the likes of Walgreens and CVS won't change your mind. That's not what's at issue here, is it? If they were to increase your pay, say by double digits, would, would the workload and the pace be enough, be, be okay? No, that's, I think if you ask any pharmacist in America right now, would they rather $5 an hour in their wage or would they rather an extra technician behind the, behind the counter to help? They would almost unanimously vote for an extra technician. This is about safely practicing. 
The disparity between what's in, at stake for Walgreens and CVS if a medication error, error occurs and what's at stake for a pharmacist or the pharmacy manager who's ultimately responsible for every prescription that goes out, they risk so much more. They could lose their license. They could be on probation with the Board of Pharmacy. Mm -hmm. They could have a hefty fine that's imposed on themselves. If Walgreens... Uh, has a medication error happen, and the only way they have to that these are even investigated because there, there's no regulation that they have to report this to the boards of pharmacy in their state is when a t when a patient reports it to the board, I and see. then an investigation occurs. So when an investigation occurs, CVS might get a ten thousand dollar fine, but you tell me who has more more to risk.